I'm in the middle of a zoo, so you can, I'm sure you can hear the sounds. And I am here at the San Marino Hotel, which was done and built by a woman. And this excites me because I love to see women who are boss ladies, who are championing, who are building their own things and building their own legacies so that it can inspire you as a woman and also inspire the men. And for me, Nanama is an inspiration. I want to hear about her journey, what made her start this hotel and what her vision is and what her plans are. I didn't even know anything about hospitality when I opened one, so I was open to learn. Sometimes you watch my interviews and you hear about the diasporans who have done well, but there are Ghanaians who are here who are also doing well, who are also building the nation Ghana. And so we like to put the spotlight on them. And today it happens to be a woman who is an inspiration, who I think her journey will inspire you. Nanama, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you feeling? Great. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So before you started the hotel, what were you doing before? I was... I'm still is though. I'm the managing director for Interstar Eye Clinic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I've done a couple of things. I, I had pharmacies. I had um, diagnosis centers. Okay. I, I've even done a lodge before. Oh wow. Yeah. Also, oh, you've been in kind of yeah. the field. I, yes. I, I, no. Not exactly. So with the lodge, I had a property and I okay. just decided to turn it into a lodge because I didn't have use for it. Okay. Yes, that was some years ago. It's okay. no longer in existence though. So. Okay. But I've always done something that has to do with hospital. Okay. Yes, because my husband is an eye surgeon okay. and um, we have a private hospital. So I, I manage that. Oh, you manage yeah. that. Okay. So you said, let's, let's talk a bit about the, the lodge because for me, that's like an entrepreneur woman right. already starting at that time. Right. You've achieved quite a lot. You're not even 40 yet. So right. tell us a bit about that. Running the hospital, we do get a lot of visitors, like uh, engineers that services the machines okay. and um, our visitors in general. So right. when they come, we usually put them in a hotel. So um, sometimes you can't even find a hotel, especially in Osu. At certain times, it's fully booked and you have to take them far. So, um, we had this property in uh, West Legon and I decided to make it kind of like a lodge. Okay. It wasn't so big, it was just a five bedroom door. So, I turned it into a lodge and then I was putting my guests there as well as taking other guests. Yeah. Okay. I know your husband is an eye surgeon. Yeah. He's got his own private hospital and also works at Kolebu. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. The eye clinic was started somewhere around 204. Okay. Yeah. Um, when he had just moved into the country. Okay. So he's a diaspora? Yes. He's good, <laughs> <laughs> he's good abroad, actually. Okay. Yeah. So Where? In Turkey. In Turkey. Okay. Yes. So when he came down, he, he uh, went to Ridge Hospital. Okay and then later moved to Kolebu. When he went to Kolebu, he saw that there was a lot lacking in the hospital. So he tried to bring one or two so he can offer those services in his private hospital, right. things that were not in Kolebu. Right. So with time, he introduced uh, much more machines and... Because it's one of the biggest eye hospitals yes, in Ghana. Is. Yes, it if is. If not the biggest. Well, I would say one yeah. of the biggest, okay. yes. So because of the new things he introduced, like uh, he being the first person to introduce LASIK in Ghana. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he also introduced laser system in Ghana. So, oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, that is what made his, um, I would say his practice successful. Right. Yeah. And you have four amazing children. Yes, we do. How are you able to manage everything that you do with your four children? Well, I would say uh, we manage time. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you have to run between office and their school yeah. and their schedules. Yeah. The vision for San Marino. How did it happen? Sincerely, San Marino wasn't a planned thing. It was actually meant to be a hospital. Okay. Then around the COVID, okay. when people started calling to make appointments on phone, they saw COVID to be around the hospital, so nobody even wanted want to, to, to the enter hospital. the hospital. So I was looking at the structure and I was like, what is the future yeah. of this structure? Yeah. So we just 
I just made a decision that it's okay, let's use it for something else. Okay. And looking at how much we spend on accommodation when our engineers come to service our machines and all, we thought of changing it into a hotel. So that is how San Marino came to. I'm not surprised that that vision actually came because it was the same type of vision that you had for the lodge. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right? That you yeah. just actually thought, hmm, why don't I turn into a accommodation right. that can service right. the right. people that I have to accommodate? Right. How long did it take you to do? Obviously, it's, it's in a prime area. It's just behind KFC. Yeah. It took us like 18 months. Okay, for wow. the structure to come in place, but uh, with the furnishing and everything, I'll say like 24 months. Yeah, yeah. the furnishing is on point and yeah. very detailed. And I mean, you guys will see the rooms, but it's it's beautiful. It's done at a very yeah. high standard. Yeah. Did you bring stuff in, or were things also made in Ghana? How how was um, it? I I shipped in some of okay. the stuff, and I also um, purchased some from Ghana. Um, the artworks are done by uh, a local guy, but I did the deco myself, girl. Oh, you did the deco I yourself? Did, yeah. Oh, is that another talent that you have? Well, I should say, <laughs> yeah. You know, during COVID, um, businesses were already bad, and you know, these interior guys are so expensive. Yeah. So when I called them and I looked at the prizes they were giving me, I decided to try and see what they yes, do. because I I really love interior, so. Okay. I started with the reception and everybody that came in liked it. And they're like, oh, the, the, the guy doing the stuff is here. I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> then let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah, so I, I did the wallpapers on wow. the floors and then here we are. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh, is this mango? Your mother died too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's have a taste of this. Mm. This is lovely. Mm -hmm. So you then yeah. you continue to do the yes, your the, interior. The, yes. So from one floor to the other, and then to the rooftop. So did they pay you for this? <laughs> <laughs> did you pay yourself? No, I didn't. In fact, I gained because um, I remember one interior lady I called said she would take. Five percent of all the purchases in the building. No. <laughs> yeah. So, looking at that, I got just scared. Like, yeah. Uh, probably I was too broke to afford <laughs> that. <laughs> so I decided to um, do it on my own, and okay. I was surprised when I started. People were liking it. They were like, "Oh, this is good. It, this is good." Yeah. I said, "Okay, so let's do the next one." Yeah. <laughs> you well know? done. Yeah. And what was the vision for the rooftop? Because I think this is like. Okay, so initially mm -hmm. the rooftop was going to be a place for my workers. Like, um, we're going to have like a gym up here, and oh. yeah, we had that plan for the workers okay. so that they could also have some equation same time. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I was going to put my husband's office up here, okay. <laughs> his private office up here, and then I actually planned to make them the the consulting rooms in suit so that the doctor has his um, consulting room, he has his office in there right. and then a waiting area. Okay. So it was very easy to change it okay. when I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I think I'm loving the hospitality. No, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I love the setup. Obviously I came here the other time and you know you can see that people are really enjoying the fresh air, the breeze, yes. the fact that you can see yeah. across Accra. Yeah. It's a real and the food. <laughs> I know. So your food is on point. Like, Thank how you. did you get the chef? Because the food is so good. Somebody introduced him. Okay. And when he came, usually when they come, they will um, do some testing yeah. of food. So he did it and we all fought for it. So okay. he's been there all this while. Wow. Yeah. How was it like doing business in Ghana? Like, as a Ghanaian, you know, how was it like? I'll say we've come a long way. We've tried so many things. Yeah. Some didn't work. Some we had to. Uh, lose, I should yeah. say, because if you start business and it's not working, you, yeah. you just have to pack out. And sometimes you've made so much investment yes, and you have to let go. Uh, lose, my husband will say, losing small is better than losing, losing big. big. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes there's a lot of frustration. Um, you have vision, you want to do something great, but the funds, <laughs> yeah, not you there. know, yeah, and the banks go like, um, 
oh, this is a new business, we can help you, or uh, they will give you, but not enough for you yeah. to accomplish your vision, you know. So it's been ups and downs, but I, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> um, God has been great. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the biggest challenge for African entrepreneurs is finance? Or is it the, they, they'll give you the finance, but the interest rate, which one is like, or what is it? that's our issue uh, I would say it's one of the issues but there are other things you know as Such Africans as um, even your colleagues in the industry will frustrate you wow. yeah because um, there are things that you may need as you are starting mm -hmm. like as a starter sometimes you need coaching from one or two people. people that have already done the business yes but once you start they already see you as a rival yeah <laughs> so, a competitor. exactly so they won't even offer you that kind of uh, help so i think that we as africans we don't help each other yeah and it's, it's something that's killing us and that's yeah. really sad yeah. because i interviewed this popcorn girl from the diaspora and she went to a company that makes the biggest popcorn in the u.s and she right. was like look i'm starting out a popcorn thing, um, can you guys train me? Can I see your, and they did it. So I went on Google and I was like, popcorn in Los Angeles and Chicago, cause they are known for popcorn. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then I went to Popcornopolis. I emailed them, they weren't responding. I kept emailing back Good. and forth. Good. I was very persistent. And then they reached out to me and they were like, okay, you can pass by. And there was another company called the Popcorn Factory. Okay. That is also in LA as well. So I went there and I raised my hands and I was like, I want to start a popcorn business on a small scale. I don't have money to start a proper, proper production, but I'm passionate to learn, mm -hmm. I'm passionate to grow. So how can I start on a smaller scale and then grow? And they gave me so many help. They gave me their brochures their information, how to reach them, what, wow. what I can do to start on a lower scale. Wow. And then this is it. Yeah. Right? They will do it they don't, easily. Because they, yeah. they know that they've already got their market. Yes. They're not worried. Yes. In fact, with Ghana, even if the person knows you're going to open a company like hers, that's they not will. possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not possible. Yeah. But is this something that you think that you would open your arms to helping somebody? Oh, yeah. Who's in the, who's I, I see my success as um, one that God gave, not really what I have gotten. Yeah. So I don't think somebody doing the same thing will Is change anything. No. If you have confidence in what you're doing, then that shouldn't be your worry. It's true. Yeah. It, that's why chefs are able to walk in and say, I want to do an internship. You would have said, okay, he's coming to steal my recipe and yeah, send it out. It's true. But I don't think that's that should be the issue. It's true. That's why when you go to Makola, you have six people selling the, the same, same thing. thing. At the end of the day, everybody goes home with something. Yeah. So I'm not sure that's the truth. What do you think has been your lowest moment in business? Staffing. Staffing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was home and around 12 p.m. Okay. And uh, I had a call that. Uh, um, a client was angry oh, wow. and it was a very busy uh, week i think that was last year december okay and we, i rushed here and i was told a staff used a um, master key to open somebody's door so the man lost his way and because the floors are same he went opening a door and the staff thought uh, his key is not working and tried to help him and then he opened somebody else's door. <gasps> That's even, it's a crime oh. in the hospitality industry. Wow. And he's aware that he's not supposed, supposed to, to do, do that. that. But you know the kind of people, uh, staffing you have in Ghana, they think that, oh, let me be go to this man when he's leaving. He'll give you he'll a give tip. He'll give me a tip. <laughs> and he was shocked what the outcome was, oh. you know? So sometimes, um, if you don't get good staff, you no know, matter what you put out there, you're likely to have issues. Yeah. And the turnaround of staff. Yeah. Every day you have to uh, get new ones because these ones have issues. If you're not even lucky, your best ones will leave you at a time you need the most. Yeah. yeah. So I should say that is the, is the workers. Is they it? really give us issues. I, I, I see a lot of... Um, Ghanaians now employing like people from Togo or Ericos or whatever. <laughs> because you, we are forced to. 
wow. when you bring them from outside they put in their best because they know that they are not even from here right. you know right. but oh the next uh, uh, hotel he moves there he doesn't care uh, uh, the foreigner doesn't think he has that chance mm. so they stay for a long time and they are dedicated their families are not here all he's here to do is work so they concentrate more and they are more dedicated okay. yeah what about training do you have to do a lot of training oh yes to be able to we do okay. you have to and uh, training is like daily basis almost every day you have to teach something new you have to get resource persons to come and talk to them i didn't even know anything about hospitality when i opened one so i was open to learn so i was very happy to um, bring people oh to God. train so i can even be a beneficiary yeah, yeah. so i bring them uh, a lot and then i also get to learn a lot as well. yeah sometimes when they come they are even surprised that i i, I know nothing about hospitality, hospitality yeah, yeah they think i'm doing well yeah. yeah you've done well though honestly and then what about setting up because a hotel hospitality industry you need kind of different permits and all yeah. of that how was that navigating through none, that as well none of that is easy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> none of that is easy but you have to go through um, some, some of them you get it easy some of them you will struggle but hey we are here okay. so how do you see how do you see our continent how do you see africa like oh africa has great chances um i just pray that the leadership encourages more young ones to go into um entrepreneurship instead yeah. of everybody wanting a white collar job true. even uh, most people don't even want to work for private because you know there's discipline in private and the next moment you are yeah. out yeah they don't they don't want that way so why even if the government is paying less he feels more secure in the government's uh, organization than to work for private yeah so that's also um sometimes make the private sector uh, suffer what are your business ethics like for your business what are your ethics business first okay it always has to be business first workers are appreciated for what they do but i always think that if there's no customer <laughs> there's no business yeah, yeah. It's so it's always uh, business first mm. you always have to think business before something else mm. yeah and do you feel supported at the moment in terms of the business well yes yeah. yes because if i wasn't supported i can't do this alone yeah, yeah. i'm lucky to have a few um very good workers okay. yeah who has been there since day one okay uh, we are two years this year wow. and it's been amazing yeah fantastic yeah. so how are you able to balance the eye clinic and this because this is full time as well as well as this one so yes. how are you able to balance the i two? run in between hey. <laughs> but i have uh, a lot of support there's okay. a gm here okay uh, i have um, a patient's manager okay. there's hr like everybody does their work i just pass through and see what is going on okay. and yeah okay so how many rooms do you have how many suites how many you know at tell the us moment about... we have um 38 rooms okay. and then we have 12 suites okay so in total we have 50 rooms 50 rooms yes okay the rooftop is open for rent uh, for events so usually people just walk in and book and book yeah. okay what type of events have you been having birthday parties um a pop up shops, year, yes, pop up shops, <laughs> end of year, end of year parties. It's true, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. I want you to give an advice to a young girl um, who has a, a vision um, and a passion to start her own business, but doesn't know where to start from or how to start. Well, I think that uh, in everything, it's hard work. You need to give it your best shot, no matter how small you start. With time, I'm sure it will grow and you will get somewhere. Yeah. Okay, all right. Ooh, nice. nice. Wow. The last time I was here, the food was absolutely amazing. And look at it, it looks delicious. Um, so whilst we eat, you know, you guys can also enjoy us eat. <laughs> but you know, the, I think the, the thing that you need to do is that you need to Google San Marino Hotel 
you need to come and visit book a room and if you mention Gooba you get a discount as well so if I was you I'd mention Gooba and get a discount so thank you all for watching I hope that Nanama's story has inspired you and encouraged you to do something back home in Ghana because look even if you're in a diaspora or you're here in Ghana or you're here on the continent you can do something you don't have to wait you don't have to you know think that or oh, have to go out to Abruzzi or go out to London and US before I can do something in my home country. Everybody can do their part in nation building. So I encourage you to come back or do something whilst you're here in Ghana. God bless you all and thank you for watching. Bye bye.